Hi, question number 7. A particle of mass 0.3 kg is released from rest above a tank containing water. The particle falls vertically, taking 0.8 seconds to reach the surface of the water. Now, let us suppose that this is... Um, let me just draw it here. This is the tank. Okay. A particle is here and it's released and it falls on the surface of the water. Falling down means the acceleration is g. Due to the force of gravity, the initial speed is 0 meters per second and it takes some time to reach there, 0 0.8. So the time is 0 0.8 seconds. So maybe I can find the final speed here. I can use v is equal to uh, u plus at, the equation for, of motion. So v is going to be equal to then uh, u which is 0 plus at and uh, at is uh, 0 0.8 times 10. 10 is the gravity, so that means V is equal to 8 meters per second. So at that point here, it is 8 meters per second. Now, let us take a look. There is no instantaneous change of speed when the particle enters the water. The depth of water in the tank is 1.25 meters. So this is the depth of water. It is 1.25 meters. Okay, and the water exerts a force uh, on the particle resisting its motion. There's a force that's being exerted and that force is the resistive force I would say and the work done against this resistance force from the instant that the particle enters the water from here that is from the time it's got potential energy to the time it's, it reaches here with kinetic, kinetic energy and everything okay uh, the water until it reaches from the instant that the particle enters the water until it reaches the bottom of the tank is 1.2. So work done against resistive force is 1.2 joules. And then we are supposed to use an energy method to find the speed of the particle when it reaches the bottom of the tank. So we want to find V here at the bottom here. Now let us look at the total mechanical energy. We're losing energy here because there's P here and goes down so and then there's a force acting against it. So I'm going to say the total mechanical energy is the potential energy plus the kinetic energy and because these energies they are it's losing those energies falling down it's going to be equal to the work force done I mean the work done against the resistive force. So what's the potential energy? It is mgh all right, so I'm going to say mgh plus half mv square. I mean, uh, yeah, v square. I mean, u square, I would say, minus v square. All right, and all of that should be equal to the resistive force, so the work done against the resistive force. So basically, we're saying 0 0.3 times 10 times h which is 1.25 plus 0 0.5 here times uh, 0 0.3 okay and then you've got the u square which is now at that point here u is equal to 8 meters per second the initial speed before it starts going under the, under the water all right so this is then uh, 8 okay to the square minus the v square that we are supposed to find and then all of that is equal to the total, uh, the work done against the resistive force, all right? So let's do that on our calculator. So 0 0.3 times 10 times uh, 1.25, we're getting 3.75, okay, plus 0 0.3 times 0 0.5, and that should give, give us uh, 0 0.15. And 0 0.15 into 64, take away v square, and all of that should be equal to 1.2. We're almost done, so we're going to say 64 minus v square is equal to 1.2, take away 3.75, and all of that divided by 0 0.15. Let's do the right hand side, so 1.2 take away uh, 3.75. Okay, and then you divide all of that by 0 
minus 17. So what I'm saying is that minus v square is equal to minus uh, 17 and then take it with the 64 and we should be able to get minus 81 so minus v square is equal to minus 81 and this and this can go that means v is equal to the square root of 81 which is then 9 meters per second and that's the speed at the bottom of the tank the speed when it reaches the bottom of the tank now when the particle reaches the bottom of the tank it bounces back vertically upwards with initial speed 7 meters per second okay let us suppose that this is again our tank and there's water is here the object is now here and it bounces back when it bounces back it moves upwards let me just draw a horizontal line here and to show you that it's moving upwards it experiences a constant resistive force a resistance force of 1.8 newton this is the resistance force r which is 1.8 newtons okay so the object itself um, is 0 0.3 g newton okay as it goes up and we know that g is equal to negative a because acceleration is now down i mean the object is going upwards so acceleration will be negative uh, because the force acceleration due to gravity is pulling it down and also if we look carefully we've got all right okay it's going up and it's going down acceleration is now a negative so what is um, the the force acting on the object so we've got the force itself which is 0 0.3 g newton okay minus the resistive force and because acceleration is is negative so this is going to be negative minus the resistive force you get the net force which is mass time times acceleration net force which is mass times acceleration and 0 0.3 times a in other words we're saying that if you try to solve this this is going to become 3 i mean minus 3 minus 1.8 is equal to 0 0.3 a so a is going to be equal to minus 4.8 divided by 0 0.3 which is then minus 16 meters per second square <clears throat> so it's quite obvious that it's decelerating okay now that we've got the acceleration what can we do f I mean from here we know that the distance here is 1.25 meters so one of the equations that we use is s is equal to ut plus half a t squared so 1.25 is equal to u which is um, basically the initial speed at which it bounces back is given here as 7 meters per second so we know that this u here is 7 meters per second so we've got 7 multiplied by t <coughs> and then the acceleration will be negative so that's minus half times 16 times t squared and this cross out here I've got 8 t squared it's going to come here Okay, minus uh, 7t okay plus 1.25 is equal to 0 now if you were to solve this quadratically you will be able to get some answers but we can do it on our calculator I mean even if you're not allowed to use this calculator in the exams what you can do you can use formula to solve the question I mean to solve the, the quadratic I mean the equation so I mean for the sake of making this video short here I'm just going to plug in some values and then I'm going to see what happens and so we've got 1 over 4 okay and then 5 over 8 so the time it takes to go upward is there's 5 over 8 and there's 1 over 4 obviously this is greater <coughs> now is it, is it greater yes it is a greater time <clears throat> it takes more time to come down because when it's going up the speed is still high when it goes down the speed is uh, is less so it takes more time to go upwards what we're trying to say is that <clears throat> the time to go upward is one quarter all right so that's time is got to 0 0.25 seconds okay now from here what can we do further 
when the object reaches the surface here, what's the speed here? What is V? So we can use um, V is equal to let's push this up a little bit here. So V is equal to U plus AT. And we know that um, V is going to be then equal to 7 plus A which is minus 16 times T which is a quarter. So 4 in 4, 1 in this 4 plus minus becomes minus. We've got 3 meters per second. At the surface, the water, I mean the speed at the surface here is 3 meters per second. Remember, this is the surface of the water, and now the object is going to go down. Now, it bounces on the bottom of the tank, and the particle comes to instantaneous rest. T seconds after it bounces on the bottom of the tank. So, V is equal to then 0. At this point, V is equal to 0. We know that U now, which is 3 meters per second, Obviously, this was V first, okay, V is 3 meters per second, but now because it's going, coming down, this is the initial speed. Okay, so how much time does it take to come down? That's what I'm trying to find out. The time to go up is this much, seconds, quarter of a second. The time to come down, again, I'm going to use V is equal to U plus AT. So what is V? All right, V is 0 is equal to U, which is then, uh, this time it is 3 meters per second. Okay, minus A times T, and A is uh, basically we're saying GT, all right? So we're saying then 3 is equal to, um, over G is equal to T, so, and G is 10, so that's T is equal to, let's say T2, okay? Let's say this is T1, <clears throat> 0 0.3 seconds. So the total time it takes to go up, and then down is going to be equal to 0 0.25 plus 0 0.3 which then turns out to be 0 0.5 seconds. So this is our final answer and here we are for this question. Take care.